It is gridironnow.com. He's also part of the SEC Network. Tony Barnhart, it was great to see you yesterday morning. Hopefully you enjoyed your trip to Tuscaloosa. I did, Ryan. It's always fun to get back to T-Town and sort of take the temperature of everybody there, and it was a, it was a fun day. Yeah, what was your take-home message after listening to uh, three of the coaches there? Well, I think Alabama's team, obviously they're very, very talented, but there's some real – issues, and this is something that uh, Coach Saban said, that, that there are real issues that have got to get resolved and dealt with in some kind of fashion. Obviously, the quarterback is the one that the most people are talking about, but I think, you know, there's some issues on the offensive line. Lane Kiffin made it a point that Ryan Kelly is going to be really difficult to replace, and I think that's that's going to be true. And then you've got, you know, can, can you hit on the quarterback, a new quarterback for the third consecutive year? That's an issue. And finally, the, the, I think the biggest issue of all when you're looking at Alabama is the SEC road schedule. Uh, uh, you got to go to Ole Miss, got to go to Arkansas, got to go to Tennessee, got to go to LSU. I mean, to me, that is, that is four really difficult games. When you, I think you asked the question to Lane Kiffin about would he like to be able to narrow the race down to be able to get more reps, and, and I can imagine it would be a challenge if you're four guys, but after watching – yesterday's practice it seems like that competition's probably down to three Jalen Hurts yeah. Blake Barnett and, and also uh, Cooper Bate yeah I think so I think uh, David Cornwell's been nursing on foot and I think they and uh, another coach told me you can you can rep you really want to have two when you get to game week it's hard to rep three quarterbacks uh, on game week so I wouldn't be surprised if they cut it down to two I mean last year last year they basically cut it down to two before the season started and so I'm anxious to see if, if they do. And if they cut it down to two, you know, I, I think Cooper Bateman's definitely going to be one of them. So if they cut it down to two, who's the odd guy out? Is it Jalen Hurts? Is it Blake Barnett? Or do they have a, a role for Jalen Hurts uh, with maybe a Tim Tebow package or something like that? Do you see the true freshman getting a significant amount of play in time? I mean, I, mean, I know other schools do it, but uh, just judging from Nick Saban's past, he's not huge on playing a true freshman quarterback. Yeah, to me, Hurts, particularly this first year, is a sort of a specialty player, a guy who can can do things. You know, there's no question he's got a good arm. He's very athletic, but but to put him out there on a consistent basis against SEC defenses, I think you know you're very, you know, you're li- very limited in what you can run. But I still think uh, he he's just too talented not to find some kind of role for him. I just don't see him as a starting quarterback. Yeah, as, as we move forward, right now we're talking with Tony Barnhart. Uh, inside the game, Tony. I, I know that you cover the SEC from a from a whole, not only for the SEC Network, br- GridironNow dot com. Uh, your thoughts on this Mari Smith story because it will not go away. Well, my, my feeling is, and I've, I've said this over the years. I, I think this is an issue where you know the coaches are doing it because the rules allow them to do it. Okay, and, and Coach Saban made it a point yesterday that, that this is an SEC rule, and that's fine. I just fundamentally disagree with the rule. Okay, I believe a couple of things. Number one, if you're a graduate player, if you have your degree in hand, to me, you should be able to go and play anywhere you want to play. There should be no restrictions whatsoever. I know it's a conference rule. I disagree with the conference rule. The other thing, and I had this conversation yesterday, I, I just believe that, yes, you have, if you transfer to a, from one FBS school to another, you have to set out the year by due to NCAA rules. Okay. To me, that should be the only restriction. I don't think coaches should have the power to control where you go. If you sit out the year, you should be able to go where you want to go. That that may put me in the minority, but that's the way I feel. You were at Auburn today. Thoughts around the Auburn program, and I know Javon Robinson losing him last week, dismissed from the team, is a huge vacancy. Uh, do you think they can find that uh, uh, player to, to fulfill that vacancy there? Well, based on the people I talked to today, the answer is yes. I mean, look, Javon Robinson was a nice player. He, he he ran for 600 yards last year, and he obviously he was their leading returning rusher. But as I told somebody, I said, this is a guy, they've got the production, and, and they believe strongly. I talked to Tim Horton. I talked to uh, Gus Malzahn. I talked to Rhett Lashley, the offensive coordinator, about this, and they all feel uh, very confident that they've got the people in camp uh, to take care of that production. Now, Kerryon Johnson, a guy who's not been the, the featured back, the number one back, moves into that role. 
Uh, he's put on some weight uh, in the off season. He's he's a little bit tougher, and they think he can do that. And and they don't rule out the possibility of playing you know three or four running backs in a game and sort of do it by committee. I I don't get the sense that uh, yeah you never want to lose your leading rusher from the year before that's coming in. But I think they feel that they've got the talent on hand to to make up for that whatever production they lost by dismissing Javon Robinson. Can you read into that that maybe Gus has more stability than what it looks like from the outside in that he can go out and dismiss one of the you know the quality players on that football team? Does that does that give a little confidence that that maybe he's got some uh, stability within that athletic department? Somebody raised that issue to me today. Is that uh, you know he, unless he was secure in his situation, and I said this all along, Ryan. I said everybody talk about Gus Malzahn being on the hot seat. I mean, to me, the hot seat is is if you have a losing season or not so good season, you're going to get fired. I I don't see it that way. I, now, look, if, if Auburn were to go three and nine and zero oh and eight and just you know something like that, yeah, if it's a complete disaster. But my sense is that if they have just if they do okay and they're competitive with the way they've recruited, I, I personally think he'll be back. Uh, they've got just a brutal schedule. Uh, in September and a brutal schedule in the back end. But I, I think your premise, there's something to your premise that uh, Gus Malzahn felt uh, reasonably confident he could uh, let somebody like that go. Where's your next stop? Next, I'm home today. I just got home. I'm home today. I'm over about 18 hours, and i got to speak in Cartersville, Georgia, tomorrow night, and then on to Tennessee. Uh, I'll spend Wednesday in Tennessee and Thursday in Lexington, Kentucky, and then I get to come home for about two days. Well, can you imagine the hype that you'll walk into next week with that top ten ranking in the coaches' poll, and at least one uh, coach out there out of the sixty-four believe that Tennessee uh, is got a first-place vote? Well, it, it, it's going to be fun. I think this is a season that Tennessee's been building towards. And you know what? Expect you you go out and recruit better players because you want there to be expectations. Tennessee is where they wanted to be when Butch Jones came three and a half years ago. This is where they want to be. They want to be picked to win the SEC East. Now, I think they've got the best team in the SEC East, but that doesn't mean they're going to win it. But you want to, you want to be in this position. You want people to have expectations, and let's, uh, let's see how they do. Going back to Lane Kiffin here yesterday, Tony Barnhart right now inside the game. He was here in Tuscaloosa making his one of 14 SEC stops, uh, listening to Lane Kiffin, Jeremy Pruitt, and also Nick Saban. Lane Kiffin made a comment uh, towards the end of the press conference talking about the running back situation, the depth at running back, and I think he he gave his little hint there that he he thinks this uh, this competition is very close. It doesn't seem like there's a one horse race. It seems like it's going to be multiple guys, which is really ideal in, in Nick Saban way. He loves that one two, uh, possibly even three punch. Yeah, and, and, and it's different now because in the past they've had the feature guy backed up by a very young guy. Okay, and, and that's not what you got because you lose. Derrick Henry and Kenyon Drake. So now it'll be different. You've got Bo Scarborough. You got and Damian Harris is a guy that I, you know, I mean, Bo Scarborough is a talented guy and is going to be very successful. Damian Harris reminds me of Mark Ingram, and I, I, I really think he's a good player. So I think they've got they've got some real options at running back. I think I think the greater concern is uh, that offensive line and replacing big big Mister Kelly, who was a a he was the bell cow of that offense. I thought. Yeah, and as as you pointed out earlier in our conversation, Ryan Kelly, according to Lane Kiffin, may be the hardest to replace. What did you see from Cooper Bateman in practice? I, I, Cooper Bateman, he just reminds me uh, a little bit of a little bit of Jake Coker, a little bit of some other quarterbacks I've seen. I, I just think he's got the skill set as Lane Kiffin adapts. And what what Lane Kiffin has done so well the last few years is take the ability of that particular quarterback and coach him up. Okay, he did it with Blake Sims. He did it with Jake Coker, and I think he's going to do it with Cooper Bateman. What's going to be interesting to me is what does he do with the with the other quarterbacks? How many does does he? You know, Nick Saban said yesterday he would like to get to the season the way they were two years ago when they knew that Blake was going to be the starting quarterback. Obviously, they couldn't do that last year, and so do they? Do they name a starter by the USC game, or do they go into the season? and let two or three guys play and see how it plays out. That is Tony Barnhart. It's gridironnow.com. You can read about his different stops in the SEC. It's gridironnow.com. Best way to connect with him. Mr. College Football on the Twitter account. 
going into his 39th year, going into year number 40. Is that right? 39th year? This is 40. This year is 40. 40. Hard, to be- hard to believe. Well, in that stretch, I took a couple of years out to be a to be a sports editor and was totally miserable, so I came back to it. So this, since I started, this this will be my 40th year. 